Two years ago, this was the biggest and baddest iPhone that you could buy, the iPhone XS Max. And for the past year and a half and a bit, I've been using it as my daily driver and I've had zero issues with it. It's been an awesome phone. But I thought I'd upgrade and I picked up the best that Apple has to offer today and that is the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So what does a two yearly generational upgrade look like? And I suppose the scenario here would be that someone who bought this phone two years ago is just coming up to the end of their contract or their phone payment and they're looking to upgrade and pick up what is next. So what are the differences between the two? What do you gain? What do you lose? Let's get into it. What is up guys? My name is Richie. Welcome back to another video and we're going to be putting these phones head to head and I suppose discussing what you get when you upgrade to the 12 Pro Max from the old 10s Max. So let's go ahead and get started with the build quality and both of these phones are built very well. They're both stainless steel and made out of glass and obviously the main thing this year is that the, the iPhone 12 Pro Max has the new boxy square design uh, compared to last year even last year's and the year before's curvy design um which apple has had around for the past few generations at least i actually like both designs i think they both have their own unique characteristics i really like the industrial design the squared and the flatness of this one but i also like the way that this feels in the hand to hold obviously your palm is curved and this phone is just a lot more accommodating in the hand uh, to hold whereas this one it has its sharp edges you definitely know you're holding this and you can feel it that may be a good thing uh it is a little bit easier uh, less less easy to drop i suppose when you're holding it because you know it's in your hand and it's just easier to grip onto whereas this one it just kind of sits and floats in your hand but yeah like i said i like both you have some people that prefer the curved design some people that prefer the boxy design i think they have their own kind of unique uh characteristics about them but i definitely think that uh, it is a good change in the new phone some things that you actually do gain with the build quality is the ceramic shield display which means it is less easy to break the iphone 12 pro max's glass front obviously with the curved design you had that 2.5d curved glass uh, which this one does not because the the glass is actually embedded within the frame and it's all flat so less opportunity for the glass to break that's brilliant um, slightly better water resistance on this one and you also get the frosted glass back as well as an improvement on the coating of the stainless steel uh, i've got the space gray and then this one's the graphite 12 pro max i definitely have not been kind to this phone i've actually cracked the back um, and i've got a d-brain on skin on here to kind of uh, make it a bit more grippy and less fingerprinty but the sides definitely um were not looked after hopefully i don't have the same issue with the new phone yeah i suppose that's the, the trade-off with going for the graphite model is that you will see scratches on it if you do abuse the phone and i suppose the last thing with the build is the physical dimensions this phone is quite a bit bigger uh, a little bit bigger i'm not going to put them right up against each other because i don't want to scratch the display um it's a little bit taller the the 12 pro max um, and maybe a, a little bit wider too but you can definitely feel it with a squared design that it is a hefty phone to hold it is something you will notice when you are going from an older um, max model or just any older iphone in general i suppose but it is definitely something you can get used to and if you pair it up with a case it is manageable now let's move on to the displays and you have a slightly bigger display on the 12 pro max this is a 6.7 inch compared to a 6.5 inch display and is that does that really make a difference no um you do notice it in some areas but that's not enough of a difference to kind of uh, make it apparent it's not a drastic difference as if you were going from a mini to a max phone it is nicer to have a, a little bit of extra screen real estate but i don't think it, it was super necessary of apple to do that however with the displays it is a lot more color accurate on the new one it is the super retina xdr supersonic bionic all that good stuff but if we do go into say the settings app for example you can see and let me set the brightness on these as well siri set brightness to 100 percent. okay so the displays are as bright as they get uh, and i'm not too sure if it shows up well on camera but the 10s max display is cooler than the 12 pro max's display which is a little bit warmer um, that is to do with the color calibration that apple does out of the factory um, it's meant to be a little bit more color accurate on the 12 pro max when you hold them together it's something that you will notice but if you take 
um, this one out of the equation. I think this display looks brilliant. Both of them do. From looking at it here, the brightness is somewhat equal. Let's just say both displays are fantastic. You're not really going to notice a massive amount when going to the new phone. Now, I would say the biggest difference is in the camera. You're going from this little itty bitty uh, sensor to this massive um, sensor shift image stabilized um, and then you're also gaining your ultra wide lens something that you didn't have on the 10s max um, you also get night mode sensor shift dolby vision as well as improvements in co computational photography um, so that is things like smart hdr um, the neural engine with the a14 bionic which can do trillions and trillions of operations per second whereas this one can only do a few billion at a time i know big work the camera is where you will see the biggest gains and i'll see if i can pull up some comparison photos now in broad daylight you really won't see a massive difference uh, especially if you've got really nice lighting conditions um, but this is a photo that I took underneath my desk um, so this is taken on the 12 Pro Max this was taken on the um, 10s and you can see that the a14 does its thing and the lidar and all that to make the scene a little bit brighter um, and also the ultra wide so this is under my desk where it's pitch black and uh, night is definitely where this phone excels oh yeah forgot to mention that you do gain lidar on this one so that makes portrait mode as well as night mode photography and AR a lot quicker. Now let's talk about battery life because this is where the 10s Max kind of fell apart and uh, for the longest time I've been using a smart battery case uh, with this phone um, just so I could squeeze an extra few hours out of it. This one I basically get the same amount of battery life as I did with with the tennis max and the smart battery case average it around seven to nine hours if i really stretch it um, although i don't drain my phone every single day it's just not practical and i don't need to if i've got a charger right at my desk whereas this one i could probably get about four to five hours of screen on time um, let's just say that the battery both battery life both of them are fantastic this one's just a little bit more confidence inspiring because of the uh, more efficient chip as well as the bigger physical battery um, so if this with a smart battery case or a MagSafe battery or whatever Apple chooses to do this year, you could probably get two days out of it. Um, but if I really stretch it on this one, probably a, a day and a half, this one definitely get me through the day, but we'll be looking for a charger by the end of it. And lastly, let's talk about performance. Um, both of them are really quick. Like, I don't notice a massive difference when going between them. Maybe um, in things like multitasking, uh, if I'm trying to open up an app that was previously open in the app drawer uh, or uh, one of my recently used apps, like things load a little bit quicker, but it's not enough to notice a massive difference. I uh, don't really want to be putting my location on blast, but you don't notice a massive difference when you're loading apps. Yeah, they're, they're just, this phone was super snappy. I've always been impressed by this performance. I've never had it lag or really be too slow for me. Um, obviously this one being the new phone, I wouldn't expect it to, um, but the fact that I'm not seeing a difference between these two phones and their performance goes to show how far Apple Silicon and how good Apple's processes have become. Um, now things where you will notice a difference will be in AR, uh, will be in machine learning because this one has the eight core neural engine which learns a lot quicker than this one does uh, when you're exporting 4k video and shooting and editing in HDR all that good stuff but like who's really doing that on their phone unless they're trying to impress someone but in the day-to-day -day activities both phones are still fantastic um, I could gladly continue to use this phone um, for a, I'd say for for the next couple of years before I'd have a problem with it but yeah that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, I kind of just wanted to upgrade for the sake of upgrading. I definitely think, like I said, the camera and the battery life uh, are places where you'll see the biggest gains uh, when you're jumping between the two phones, as well as the design too, because I mean, this is definitely something you notice when you pick up the phone every day. Apart from that, performance and stuff is, is very similar between the two devices. Having that better camera, I think, is worth the upgrade. So if you are 
sitting on a 10s max should you upgrade and get the 12 pro max i would be inclined and say yes especially if you're a phone guy because this is obviously you know having the latest phone makes you feel something and it'll it's also really cool to play around with all the latest features and the camera and just knowing that the phone is more reliable and will last you through the day. If you are happy with this and you don't really have the money to do to, to upgrade or if you don't really care about the camera, you like the design, I could say you could probably keep this phone around. Um, I'm thinking of passing this one over to my dad since he's sitting on a 6S Plus, um, although I did crack the back on this one, um, but I think he will be very happy with the performance and the usability of a two-year-old phone. So yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts. Phones are getting so good that you don't even need to worry about yearly upgrades or even two yearly upgrades uh, anymore. Like, they're both brilliant. Um, you can't go wrong either way if you decide to stay on the old phone or if you do decide to upgrade to the new one. Anyways, let me know what your thoughts are. What phone are you using currently and what phone are you planning on getting? Or if you've got a 12, let me know how it's going or what you're noticing with it. Uh, I'd definitely love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. So if you want more iPhone content, uh, leave a like. I'll definitely do a full proper review or kind of thoughts. I don't really like to do reviews because it seems too formal. I'll compile some thoughts about this 12 Pro Max and actually do maybe a camera comparison like I did last year with the 11 Pro Max. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys want to see. Let me know your thoughts and I will reply to your comments down below. Also subscribe for more content and uh, yeah, that's been it. Thank you so much for watching and sticking around to the end and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.